So the water roars in through each of these six nozzles. Deflectors in front, aim it into the right place to hit the buckets. Set this wheel spinning, 500 RPM. Sets the shaft spinning, and from there, they create electricity. Responsibility for keeping the turbine in tip-top condition lies with Walter Staudacker, and for today only, me. This is where it all comes together, and at this point, it suddenly becomes about absolute precision. The precise design and shape of these buckets enables them to harness as much as 92% of the energy from the water. Talk to me about the splitter, the bit in the middle. How much? Yes, the splitter in the middle. There, the, the jet, the water jet, is cutting into two pieces. You know, like a knife at home, it had to be sharp, otherwise you need a lot of force. So I've got to sharpen the splitter. Yes. I've never said that before. Here, that's now running, that's the grinder. Put on your eyes, and then you start grinding up here. Here, go. Oh my god, this is right at the heart of the machine. All the effort we've seen so far hangs on what happens there. There is a very good reason why the bucket on this turbine wheel are this shape. If you had a single scoop, the water would come in here, hit it, turn the wheel, that's good, but then some of it would splash back and hit the bucket behind. That's inefficient. This is about controlling how the water gets out as well as how it gets in. With the splitter in place, water comes in, hits it, pushes the wheel, but then is sort of scooped straight out in two even streams. It's efficient. That's how they get to 92% efficiency here. The reason this has to be sharp, and why I've just been sharpening it, I can demonstrate with this. Here's my bucket, my scoop. Here is the splitter, nice and sharp. And here comes my flow of water fresh from the dam. And as it hits, the splitter is dividing it between the two sides of the bucket. And that's not bad. I've lost some ping pong balls, but they've ended up pretty much evenly distributed between the two sides. Maybe we've got 92% efficiency there. Right, we can reset and demonstrate how it would work with a less sharpened splitter. Right, so all I'm doing is turning this over. It's got a blunt edge, it hasn't been sharpened. Same process, switch on water coming all the way from our dam, hitting the bucket at the very end, and it's, it's a disaster. Every ping pong ball flying away is more water not being used to push the turbine wheel you won't stand a chance of hitting 92-odd percent efficiency. And now we've got to tidy up their turbine hole. Sorry. Above the turbine, where the water hits the buckets, is the generator, which creates the electricity. And they're connected by a massive 25-tonne metal shaft. directly above that turbine beneath me. It's turning as the water pushes it round. This is the output shaft. And that means the turbine has done a very clever thing. It's turned linear motion of the water moving along into rotary, circular motion. In the old days, that would be a water wheel. You'd use this to grind corn or even sharpen knives. Here, they're using it to make electricity. And how they do that is pretty simple. This is in miniature what's happening here. It's a bicycle dynamo line. And if I persuade it to come apart, you'll see that when your bicycle wheel turns this shaft on the end, this shaft on the end of it is a magnet. Magnets are a funny thing. Move a magnet around a conductive metal like copper, and it moves tiny particles inside it, electrons. And moving electrons, that is electricity. And so if I reassemble my little dynamo here, I'm going to see if I can use a bit of their power to make my own. I'm stealing their power. <laughs> so that is water from the dam turning that gigantic turbine to turn both the enormous generator above and my tiny bicycle one here and light this light. I mean, it would be a lot of trouble to go for if that's all it did. It's on a bigger scale than this. 
Wayne's beloved soccer field is about to be on the move. 48 hours from now, this won't be a soccer stadium, it'll be an NFL stadium with a completely different pitch and layout. They have practiced this process, breaking the pitch up, sliding under the south stand and making other transformations here, but they've never done it for real. This is their first live event. There are thousands of tasks to be completed. The atmosphere is already tense, but it's okay because they told me I can help. Be fine. I'm not just helping. Nick has told me that I'm about to drive the football pitch. You're all right to operate it, aren't you? Yeah, I've never crashed anything it's, in my life. It's easy. Hold down wireless command. Yes. And then you push that up. No, this will, this will be the biggest thing I've ever driven. In your life? Fast. This yes. is the first? It's also a football pitch. Yes. Is it? It's not the fastest. It's definitely the first football pitch I've ever driven. <laughs> yep. Oh, there it is. My first job is to move the pitch one and a half metres sideways, tearing apart the three segments of field. That is a football pitch that has just split along its length on purpose. With a flick of my thumb, 68 electric motors begin to drive the pitch out of the stadium, along the rails at a sedate seven metres per minute. So what we're doing now is you're doing 3,000 tonnes, and by the end of the day, you'd have moved 9,000 tonnes, which is more than the weight of the Eiffel Tower. Cool. All right. When you think about it and look at it without seeing it move, it's immensely complicated, but seeing it all happen... It's simple. There's a kind of simplicity to it. it. This type of engineering hasn't really changed in, in, in decades. It's just big moving stuff. It's toys with mechanics. And a lot of toys. The first section is in the car park without a hitch, but I'm feeling a bit overconfident. Driving right. both at the same time. Um, am I moving now? No, that's moving. That's moving. I got... I, because it switched from that one to that one, I got complete... I very nearly fell over. Right, so that one's now moving. Yes. Yeah. like being a mole popping your head up in the middle of a lawn. <laughs> just standing here watching it's, the other pitch reveal It's itself. quite deceptive, isn't it? Not just a pitch, either. It's another whole sort of culture. It's another world. NFL is a yes. different world from what they play on here. Yes. That's remarkable. And the whole, the whole stadium is that it, when you're down at the it, feel it feels completely different. It really the does. The acoustic is. And the reason this is done is so that you can look into an NFL pitch. Yeah, it's a totally different place. It's taken just 25 minutes to roll away a grass field. But I have to admit, I'm a little concerned about Wayne. His pride and joy will spend the next 13 days in a car park. Well, we've got it in here safely. A couple of bits of it were rather nicely driven, but I don't want to bounce. I didn't see that bit. How <laughs> <laughs> would you... Get off! <laughs> It's in safely, so going through the things that grass needs, it needs light because it mm -hmm. sits in sunlight, obviously. So we have the LED lights uh, in the ceiling. That basically maintains the photosynthetic activity within the plant during storage, but LED lights are slightly different light, so it doesn't stimulate too much growth, so we get a lot of top growth when we have to mow so much. How do you mow it? We've got some autonomous robot mowers. So its needs can be met, it can be kept alive and nurtured. Are you going to be awake at night worrying? Um, yeah, obviously, it's, it's a natural thing to worry about the pitch, because obviously it's such a key thing to the business. Yeah. Uh, people often refer to it as our baby, which in general yeah. it is. We, we work on it every day. It's a seven-day-a-week operation, three, six, five days, so we're, we'll be in on Christmas Day regardless. And, yeah, it's, it's really surreal, because although you know the pitch splits until it actually splits, you know, like this morning, you know, you would never know, so to put it in here, now it's, you know, even for me, even surreal to look at. Yeah. So That's yeah. your pitch. <laughs> yeah. I've no doubt that when you roll this out again and present it to the world, it'll be healthy and hale and hearty and green <laughs> and brilliant and lush and wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will be, it will be. No pressure there. In just four and a half hours, Tottenham Stadium has swapped soccer for American football. There's a new pitch and a whole new world. But it'll take more than a pitch switch to turn North London into California. <laughs> <laughs>